Hi, my name is Peter Coffin, and a lot of people think I'm a contrarian, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm actually really actually not. People love calling people they disagree with contrarians, though. It's one of the most common ways that people attempt to discredit an argument against them. Oh, you're just saying that because it's the opposite of what I'm saying, and you just don't like me. So what is contrarianism? Well, Merriam-Webster defines contrarian as a person who takes a contrary position or attitude, specifically an investor who buys shares of stock when most others are selling and sells when most others are buying. So a successful investor. <laughs> but I will say, I, I don't think anybody's going to accuse me of any kind of investing strategy anytime in the near future. So maybe that's not what everybody means when they say contrarian. Fortunately, we have something called the Urban Dictionary, which defines a contrarian as someone who automatically tends to take the opposite point of view from the person to whom they're speaking or to disagree with society at large out of a sort of knee-jerk reflex. This is what people think that I am. But they're wrong! I'm sorry. That's so stupid. <laughs> they are wrong, though. Like, that's legitimately not how I act at all. I'll give you a little insight as to how that's incorrect. Here's a YouTube comment I got a couple of days ago. It says, I don't think Peter has any views besides be a contrarian. I don't think you have any real beliefs. Also, plagiarism wouldn't exist under socialism. Money isn't the only motivating factor. People are greedy, even in a communist utopia. See, what I like about this is that it's contrarianism. <laughs> I don't have any beliefs. However, look at all the beliefs this person disagrees with me on. First off, Ben Ward is saying, even in a communist utopia. That means he's ascribing communism to me. Now, it is possible to be a communist because you're simply contradicting the popular view of capitalism. But that's not why I'm a communist. We'll get to that in just a second, but um, I want to tackle this. People are greedy, even in a communist utopia. What this statement puts forward is that greed is human nature. It doesn't matter what the incentives and rewards are. People are greedy. It's just inherent in people, which is what I've been consistently arguing against for well over a decade. I am not a contrarian. You just disagree with me. And that's really what it is. I have an extremely consistent worldview. I'm a Marxist, and although my views do evolve, and I'm happy to incorporate things that I consider correct that Marx himself didn't come up with, I am analyzing things from a dialectical materialist position. That is to say, there are two opposing forces that exist in society, and their conflict is what progresses society. In the case of this comment, uh, this person is mad at me because I'm criticizing H. Bomber Guy and his plagiarism video because... I think that H-Bomb's criticism of plagiarism is just a moralist, individualist lack of oversight as to the incentives and rewards of plagiarism. I advocate for viewing things from a systemic perspective, again, from a dialectical materialist perspective. Now, very specifically, people have pointed out repeatedly that the intent of the video isn't to elucidate a systemic criticism of plagiarism, but to talk about a few instances of YouTubers being bad. And, well, that's exactly my criticism about it. That's the problem I have with it, specifically. When the idea of systemic solutions regarding plagiarism comes up, H-Bomb not only tells us that thinking about systemic solutions is dangerous, but he also gives us an incorrect idea of what systemic solutions even are. When I talk about systemic solutions, I'm referring to the fact that there is an owning class and everybody else. There's haves, there's have-nots. To own is to have control. Altering that power relation is a systemic solution. Now, I am not telling you I know exactly how to do that, but I am telling you that I know what the core of the harm of plagiarism actually is. It is that there are rewards and thus incentives to plagiarize. And it's not as though I didn't say this in my other videos. However, I will say it again. In focusing on individuals and talking about what they can do to be better or what the right way to be a content creator is, is simply 
ignoring where the harm of plagiarism comes from. If there was no reward for making tons of content as quickly as possible that people liked, there would be no reason to plagiarize. And on top of that, it wouldn't get you anywhere to plagiarize. To address the power relationships that create that harm is a systemic solution. Again, I cannot tell you how to do that. I can only tell you that it requires power that requires people to band together. And to band together, we can't be talking about which individual creator is the bad guy, which person in the community needs to be expelled, who among us, the non-owning class, is bad. That is not how we build power. That is not how we become a serious political force. And no, I am not telling you that me making this video creates a meaningful political force. I am telling you that I am making criticism. That is what I have done since God knows how long, even back when I was making satire, even back before I knew anything about Karl Marx or how Marxism works, what dialectical materialism is. Before then, I knew that there were people in control, and I knew that they were the problem. Now I know not only why, but there are coherent political forces in the world that oppose this, and in elucidating a criticism, people are able to see what the problems actually are. And when you know what the problems actually are, you start having something to address. The reason I criticize somebody like H. Bomber Guy is not because I just want to contradict him. If he started saying the same shit I was saying, I would not contradict him. If all of these people woke up tomorrow and started exclusively blaming the owning class for the problems of the owning class, I wouldn't contradict them. That is my viewpoint. Now, there is one piece of the definition of contrarian that I think I understand why people are so willing to ascribe to me. They assume that I automatically tend to disagree with society at large out of a knee-jerk reflex. Because on some level, it probably looks that way. Now, the thing about ideology is that the ideology that is prominent in society is that of the rulers, the people who own everything and rule everything, the people who own the media, the means to disseminate information. Um, it should make sense why their ideology is the prominent one, right? And I know somebody will be like, who is they? Who owns the media? Is it the Jews? Some. A lot of the people that own the media are not Jews, though. Funny enough, the thing I'm criticizing isn't what they are, but what they own. Anyways, it might seem that I disagree with society at large because that ideology, the ideology that is being disseminated to justify their ownership and thus rule, is something I disagree with. And it's quite prominent. But that is part of a specific worldview informed by a specific critique. It is not due to a reflex. It is not due to simply wishing to say the opposite of someone else. It is informed by a consistent critique. So again, am I a contrarian? No, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am. I'm not. In all seriousness, if you really, really think that I'm a contrarian, fine. All right. Look, I, I know that there's a set definition for what people think they're saying when they're calling someone a contrarian. But what it really is, is people saying, why aren't you preaching to me, the choir? I call myself a socialist, and so do you. So you shouldn't be saying things that make me uncomfortable with my positions and the people that I watch. And the fact is, no, that's not true. I've had multiple people spew this one type of comment at me saying like, oh, yes, H. Bomber guy, notorious capitalism supporter. <laughs> and I had a conversation recently with some friends about the death of the author. I don't really assign death of the author to this type of situation. I don't really like death of the author. I think that it's wrong. I think it's a simplistic reframing of something that faux or quasi concedes all meaning to the consumer. 
which I say faux or quasi because it doesn't actually concede that meaning. It allows people to think that they're coming up with meaning, but also whatever meaning is beneficial to the power structures, the power structure will then ultimately propagate. But the thing here is that I do think that intent certainly does dictate a layer of meaning. Like, yeah, H-bomb did not intend to criticize the system. He was explicit in pointing that out. But that doesn't change the fact that he exists in a context where there is a system to criticize, and ultimately, it is responsible for the harm done by plagiarism, which is the depriving of the original creator of the reward for creating the content. And although people will say, well, his intent wasn't to talk about intellectual property law, what this is, is ideology in deference to intellectual property law, which is itself ideology in deference to the primary contradiction of capitalism, which is the core problem. In conclusion, I'm not a contrarian! Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.